Hello, everybody. Welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. And today we'll be doing a box office breakdown for this past weekend, which saw Barbenheimer destroy the box office, literally destroy the box office in more ways than one, with the best opening to date for a box office weekend, and with Barbie specifically as its own individual release, having the best opening so far of this year with a $155 million domestic opening. That is indeed the best for the domestic marketplace. And Oppenheimer not doing too shabby either, making over $80 million. So therefore, together, a combined $300 or so million dollar box office weekend with all of the other films that we also have to talk about. So a lot of successes all the way around. Sound of Freedom continuing to do very well. We also have some updates on Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Man, that title is still very, very long. And hey, we finally actually have data to point to, hey, guess what? The movie is not doing as well domestically as it should be doing at this point in time, if it had any hopes of breaking even. And we can say pretty much with a lot of surety at this point, now that we have the numbers and now that we have the data in front of us, the film not likely to make its money back. But hey, still has a chance. We can absolutely say a billion dollars is off the table completely for that movie. And in fact, Barbie now actually has a chance at a billion dollars. But we'll talk about what would be needing to happen in order for the film to hit that mark and why it would really, again, concern me quite a bit if the film does get to that point. And again, all of that stuff is stuff we'll talk about and we will break down. Before we get any further, though, please make sure you smash that like button, not that fire button, honestly, smash the rumble button as well. And also make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with that bell notification. That way you know every time we do a live stream goes live on the channel. So Lord knows the haters are going to be out today in the comment section. We've already been seeing a bunch of them coming out to gloat about Barbie doing well. But hey, credit where credit's due. We have to give a huge amount of credit right now and shout out to the marketing team at Warner Brothers that were selling the movie Barbie because congratulations, you sold a movie that didn't actually get released. The movie that you sold was very impressive though. The movie that you sold was so impressive. In fact, you had the best box office opening of the weekend because of that. It's not because of Greta Gerwig. It's not because of Margot Robbie. And it's not because of the movie itself. And we know this because you can look to any other film that Greta Gerwig has ever done. You can also look to any other films that have had the same subject matter as this. And you know that those films typically don't do very well. Why did this film do well? Well, hey, you had a fantastic marketing campaign run by the fact that it was about a doll that's over 70 years old at this point in time. Kind of weird to think about. But hey. That means that you have generations and generations. You have not just children, but also their parents, their grandparents, even great-grandparents, who all will have some connection in some way with Barbie, with the IP of Barbie. So when you have that massive of an IP and a great marketing campaign to boot, how could you not see a successful opening weekend? Add to that the power of the internet meme with Barbenheimer, with some people who would have seen Bar Oppenheimer only, now also seeing Barbie, and a lot more people who would only have seen Barbie, now also crossing over to watch Oppenheimer. Hey, that crossover ended up being this weird double feature event that a lot of people ended up going to, and so it makes sense as to why the film has had such success in this way. But the big question mark is going to be, are people going to finally wake up? And that is really the ultimate question, because if people don't wake up, if we don't see a catastrophic loss or rather a catastrophic drop for Barbie next weekend, what that tells me is a couple of things. Either one, the marketing campaign is so impressive that it's convincing people, even those that have already seen the movie, that it was actually the movie that the trailers promised it to be and not the third wave feminist garbage that it actually ends up being. Or it means that there's a lot more women in this world that actually embrace and endorse the ideology being perpetuated by this movie. And if that's that second one, guess what? That, that makes me very, very scared and terrified because if you actually have watched the film, if you've actually read some of the lines and quotes from this movie, and if you know the general ideas and premises that are being pushed by this crap film, you again, you I think at that point recognize okay, this is something that not only should no children ever go to see this movie again, it is PG 13, but the way it's marketed is clearly directed towards and geared towards kids. But also, it is something that I think should cause some concern the fact that again, even after all of the information about the film has already been out, major names like Critical Drinker have put their word out there. You also have other major, uh, you know, typically more conservative leaning people also being, you know, be being becoming very famous, internet famous, as it were. 
I know some people might be pointing to like people like Ben Shapiro who had a 45 minute review of of this movie. Again, love or hate Ben Shapiro for different reasons. His review was pretty spot on. But right now, I think the best out there is probably Critical Drinkers. He's always much more um, middle of the road with a lot of his takes. He tends to be much more based in reality, breaking things down from an objective standpoint. And if anyone's going to reach people, I think a lot more people are going to be reached by Critical Drinker than someone like Ben Shapiro because of that ideological difference there or the least one being ideological where the other is, hey, a movie fan. But we still can't we still can't dance around the issue, which is that Barbie is doing very well. So well, in fact, that we could argue that the film's already broken even. That's already made its money back. Remember, the film costs around $100 million to make. Uh, the record says around $145 million, but it's also suspected that they got about $50 million or so in tax credits. So the actual raw spend on the movie after all of that would be around $100 million, which means even if you have a three times multiplier for this movie... The movie has already then broken even. The difference is, and the change happens when you uh, take into account that maybe the budget was actually higher. Maybe the tax credits weren't as promising or weren't as impressive as what's being indicated or implicated. And then that would mean that the film is right on the cusp of that. And no matter what you say about it, it is breaking even. It is, in fact, going to make quite a bit of profit. Because even if the film does have a massive drop-off second weekend, and at this point, I hate to say this, but at this point, I don't see that happening. Because I honestly think that one of the second things that I said earlier about the kind of people going to see this movie and how they might actually be endorsing the stuff being perpetuated in this film, I think that the more and more that we get away from the uh, opening day of this, meaning you have more and more people using the word of mouth, talking about the film, and seeing all the positive praise that the film has been getting overwhelmingly, yeah, that that definitely is bringing up those concerns in that way. Um, but hey, the film is doing very well, has already broken even, if not made profit. And if it's not already done that, if you do indeed subscribe to a higher multiplier or to the film having cost a lot more, also keep this in, in, in your mind as well. If the film actually costs $100 million, typical spend on marketing would be 50. Most people, even people in the mainstream media who love this movie, suspect that the film probably costs closer to $100 million in its actual marketing campaign. And when you look at how effective and how far reaching it was, That makes a lot of sense that they would spend that much money on a movie that they thought, hey, we'll be able to get a return on this investment for. And hey, seems to be paying dividends for them being at that they are right on the cusp of that. Oppenheimer also is a film that looks to me like it is probably going to be able to make its money back pretty quickly as well. This is also a movie that has a projected cost of around $100 million. I just don't believe that. The numbers currently... Uh, The site, The Numbers, has the film listed at $185 million production budget, which sounds a little bit more realistic. The reason why I don't buy the $100 million production budget is because of how much money I know IMAX stock cost. And the fact that the entire film was shot on IMAX, that they had to invent a brand new kind of IMAX film with the black and white, Never before had happened. Christopher Nolan asked for it. They made it for him. That's a custom make. That's a brand new technology, which means that's going to have cost money too. And also the reports that the film itself is between 7 and 11 miles worth of IMAX footage. That's a lot of money on just film stock alone. That's before you talk about paying the actors, paying all the other production design stuff. They use practical effects. They blew up a bomb, right? Obviously not a nuclear bomb, but a bomb nonetheless. A very, very powerful one, in fact. So I look at all those things and I think to myself... $100 $100 million just does not make any sense whatsoever. We'll have to, of course, wait and see uh, the numbers as they continue to come out. But either way, with it opening the way that it has, it is looking very good for this movie, too. Now, this big question will also be, how powerful is the Barbenheimer meme? Is it going to be able to carry over to next weekend? Will the double features continue next weekend? Will Oppenheimer or Barbie, for that matter, have uh, return visits? Between the two, Oppenheimer seems to make the most sense. It's a Nolan film. It's a film that is very meticulously made and is very complex and confusing. Personally, I was not a big fan of it. I think I gave it a B for for the actual film. It's a pretty B-level film, especially in the uh, entire filmography of Christopher Nolan. But that being said, it is still one of those movies that people who do love it are likely to go see that film again. You might see some of that return visits for, for, for the Barbie film, for those that really appreciate the marketing that, or rather appreciate the messaging that Greta Gerwig decided to push down everyone's throats with the movie. But it just seems to me like you would have more return visits for a film like Oppenheimer, especially since it's going to own IMAX for the next few weeks versus a film like Barbie, where it might be that film that people say, I had fun with it, but you know what? I don't necessarily want to see it again because maybe that messaging get, got to me to a certain degree. Who knows? Next weekend, of course, will be the big tell. Um, We also, of course, have Tony over at Deadline. That's right. Tony is uh, showing why he is Tony and not Anthony. Tony 
is running with this narrative already. Greta Gerwig's Barbie scores the record box office U.S. opening for movies directed by woman. That's right. You've heard it here from Tony. He's saying that, hey, woman power, everybody. One of the prime records Barbie is breaking this weekend. Prime? Really? is the best domestic start for a movie helmed by a female director with $155 million. That figure beats the 2019 Captain Marvel film co-helmed by Anna Bowden and had a $153 million start. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there then, Tony, because you've just already admitted that was in 2019, which means you didn't adjust for inflation, which means technically Captain Marvel then still... Dollar for dollar, tickets for tickets has the best opening for a female. Not that that should matter because I thought we were supposed to live in a world where we no longer saw people by the color of their skin or by their gender, but instead by the content of their actual character. But again, that kind of goes out the window. Also, Tony, I would love to ask you this question. I mentioned this on the Geeks and Gamers video as well, but for those that maybe don't cross over between the two, the question that I have for him is, what is a woman, Tony? Because I actually have to bring this up. If you think back to the openings of The Matrix, and I've not looked up those records, or I have not looked up those numbers, but I would be kind of interested to find out what the openings were, because if you think about it, Tony probably is of the ilk that think that the directors of the, again, the Wachowski brothers are now the Wachowski quote-unquote sisters, even though they're still both biological men. So would you then also, Tony, have to admit that, hey, since they are women, that they therefore would actually be probably having the highest? I haven't looked at the data itself, it's, but again, it's, I think it's an interesting point. I think it's an interesting question that I would love to hear Tony have to answer. Nance, what's going on, Nance? Glad to see I was able to find your uh, article here about the international box office. So, Barbie, a knockout. Always love their puns. With $337 million, $337 million global opening, Oppenheimer getting $174 million in its worldwide launch. Now, it has to be said, remember that I've mentioned this with all the other movies that I've covered. Most films, if they have a typical release schedule, this is something that I was able to, to figure out, if their global opening weekend has a typical follow-through, meaning, again, typical drop-off, typical holds from, from day to day, what you end up technically seeing from it is around 30% of the entire box office globally being made in its opening weekend. So if that plays out, if Barbie does not see a catastrophic drop, and right now there's nothing that would indicate that that will happen, some of the weekday numbers might be able to indicate that if we start to see massive drops for the Sunday to Monday scores or over the course of the week, if it starts to get higher and higher drops, that might be indicative of word of mouth getting around about the nonsense being pushed by the movie. If we don't though, hey, that means that the chances of the film doing well next weekend are likely. And if that happens, guess what? You're looking at a film that will, again, remember, typically about a third of their box office. That would mean Barbie at this point with this kind of a start would be able to get upwards of $900 million to potentially a billion dollars. That's right. Barbie, actually, I can say at this point, has the potential. It's not a guarantee. Just like it was not a guarantee with Mission Impossible 7, that's now completely off uh, off the rails and that's now completely not going to happen. But Barbie at this point in its release absolutely has that potential. And again, that's just if it has an average release. It doesn't even need to have strong holds to be able to get to that point. If it drops off between 50 and 60% next weekend domestically and has a similar drop off internationally, that would still keep it on that average pacing. So just keep this in mind that if you take that 337 and multiply it by three, guess what? That brings you to a billion dollars. So that means that a billion dollars is on the table for this movie. It would have to see a catastrophic drop off. I hope that happens because that's the only thing that's going to, you know, renew my faith in, in humanity or at least half of humanity. But also it means that, hey, even if it has a slightly higher than expected drop, it still likely will be able to make quite a bit of money. And even if it doesn't hit a billion dollars because it costs so little, that's a massive return on investment. It doesn't make up necessarily for all of the box office bombs from Warner Brothers this past year or in the years past, not to mention what Blue Beetles losses probably will end up being with those early um box office numbers being you know reported and released for that movie but it does indicate right how that film is actually doing if we took a take a look at Oppenheimer using the same metric there it would bring the film to about 522 million dollars so you're probably seeing Oppenheimer half a billion worldwide that would make a bit of sense and if it did cost as little as they expected that would make a box office profit there bring in some more numbers so hey it would be a win for Universal picking them up after after Warner Brothers dropped them but I just wanted to get those numbers out there because I know some people are interested in those metrics. All right, going into the domestic numbers, again, Barbie coming in clearly as the number one film with $155 million, and there are some people who are also speculating that the film could see upwards of $160 million. What's interesting to me, and even Tony over at Deadline points this out, is that Warner Brothers is not expecting the film to hit $160 million. It says right here, Warner's isn't a studio to get over their skis and estimates. Remember, going into the weekend, Warner Brothers 
So this was not me using my own personal calculations. This was Warner Brothers. They said they thought the movie, Barbie, was going to make $75 million. So it did double what they said it was going to make. So either they had no confidence in the movie, or they were trying to, to lie and make it look like it was better than it actually was. Who knows? We know that the overall uh, uh, industry so-called experts had the film pegged around 100 to 120 million. And I said, hey, you know what? I think 100 to 120 million sounds about right to me. And then we got those opening weekend numbers. And then we got those opening day numbers, I should say, like over $20 million worth in previews. And you start to realize, okay, this film's going to be a lot bigger than what some were expecting. Some actually thought the film could get upwards of the $170 million range. What does this mean? It means that, hey, Box Office Pro finally got one right for once. You know, typically they they overproject. A lot of their metrics are based off of social media presence and things like that, things that are not always indicative of ticket sales. In this case, it actually ended up being correct. So shout out to Box Office Pro for actually getting and guessing this one right. Um, but it's still interesting nonetheless that Warner Brothers completely underplayed this movie and again, only had predicted half of what the film actually made and that was just in the domestic marketplace uh oppenheimer as well did much better than what was expected that film was expected to only do about 50 million dollars domestically and it's now expected to do 80 million that's why some people suspect that that could have been and probably is that barbenheimer effect having been to my own local cinema i can say barbenheimer was indeed in effect to what degree we can't really know but it was absolutely in that effect. Coming in the number three weekend for number three, the third weekend for Sound of Freedom from Angel Studios. That movie is expected to come in the number three spot, making another $20.1 million. Now, what's most interesting about Sound of Freedom is that Tony has a bit of an issue right now with what's being reported from Angel Studios. Now, it's interesting to me because I don't think that Tony has ever had this kind of speculation or this kind of doubt about a studio's numbers that are being reported ever before. I have never seen him do this, and yet we all know he spent very, very little time actually talking about the movie. He always spends as little time as possible. This might be the longest take I've seen from him on this movie, and guess what? It's being critical and calling out and making speculations about what is going on with the studio. It says, Deadline is officially calling Mission Impossible in the third place at the box office. Angel Studios is trying to claim third with Sound of Freedom at 20.1 and reporting their weekend estimates hours, hours after the industry publishes their results in the early AM. How dare they? How dare they do things differently and go against how the industry tends to do this? Realize Comstore is the police officer among distributors when it comes to reporting and counts close to 100% of all theater grosses. At the end of the day, Comscore reports what distributors provide them after they tabulate the unmonitored locations. The industry average estimates for Sound of Freedom is 19 million. There is no way a handful of mom and pop theaters, which went unmonitored by Comscore, collected $1 million. Just no way. And I think that's the big problem, Tony, is you think it's impossible. Now, if he had said it's mathematically impossible, I would have to take him at his word for that. As you all know, I tend to be very much focused on mathematic possibility, using trends, using records, using all of these different things. So if he were to say that, okay, I would give him the benefit of the doubt. But he just says, it's no way. There's just no way it happened. And why? Because they're unmonitored. There's no way that the mom and pop local theaters could have brought in that much money. And again, if he indeed can provide the information to explain why mathematically that just would not be possible, okay, then we can talk. If you're talking about probability, here's the thing, dude. You have to keep in mind, this movie is doing really, really well. There are packed theaters across the country, not in every market, but in many markets. And in fact, many of these rural towns, many of these rural people who typically don't go to see movies, guess what? They might have a local mom and pop theater that has this movie. I actually can totally believe that they would have a packed theater, even with less seats. So to say a million dollars is impossible, unless you can provide the data to say it's mathematically impossible... And again, if you did provide that, I would say, okay, that would, I am totally willing to give you that point. But just to say that it's just no way it's possible. Again, I don't really think that's a strong enough argument there. It goes on to say, it's not to say that Angel Studios doesn't have a hit on their hands. So it's trying to save face there a little bit. $100 million plus closing title. But there's some concern by rivals that there's some puffing of the numbers by this frost distributor. And it's not a case of David versus Goliath. Running total through weekend three is 123.6 per industry ex uh, estimates. Deadline is still looking into this to see where the extra $1 million is coming from. Um, now, I believe this was actually updated from the last time I read it right before the stream, right before the video started where it just said de Deadline is still looking into this. So again, the most amount of ink he spent on this movie, and it's to try to essentially accuse, in no, in no later terms, try to accuse Angel Studios of puffing up their numbers. So 
Again, it'll be interesting to see what the comm score numbers end up indicating, but regardless, Sound of Freedom is doing very, very well, no matter how you spend $124 million domestic. Very impressive. This film is well on its way to probably getting to $150 plus million. Could we see the film get even to $200 million? It's possible. Let's just go ahead and see right now and compare that to a film that has a weak advantage on it in Indiana Jones, Dial of Destiny at $159 million. If you think about how much money is behind Indiana Jones and how little money by comparison was behind Sound of Freedom... It just becomes that much more damning towards Disney and to the entire Hollywood structure. Now, based on these numbers, the numbers is using what's being reported by Angel Studios specifically. And again, the actuals will change. So we could see Sound of Freedom drop to the number four spot. Right? That absolutely could still happen. Again, these are estimates at this point. But Mission Impossible didn't keep, didn't did indeed drop to number four this weekend, getting $19.5 million and dropping 64%. Now, remember, I said going into the weekend, if it dropped around 50% or so, it would be in a decent position. At 64% drop domestically and seeing a decent drop internationally, a decent hold internationally, but not anything to, to write home about, yeah, Mission Impossible might actually be in trouble at this point in time. I know some people have been calling this for a long time, pointing to its opening week numbers, but remember, those numbers are still historically hard to actually track and hard to actually pinpoint to say that you actually could see any problems or any danger with the film at that point. There's just no real metric. There's no real comparison to to be able to bring the film up against. But with this, right, with a second weekend drop off like this, again, now we actually have historical data to point to. And even though even the numbers themselves, if you look at their own box office tracking, Pulling this up for a second, as you can see, they actually have the shaded range. As it says right here, the shaded range ep represents expected performance range for a film based on its opening weekend. 95% of all movies fall within the shaded area. If a film tends towards the top end of the shady area, it has good legs compared to the average film. If it tends towards the bottom of the shaded area, it has poor legs. Well, if you see right here, this is trending towards the top end. It's not towards the tippy top end, but still towards the top nonetheless. So most films with the opening weekend, and this is stuff that's been, again, this is historical data. That's why I, I like the numbers because they use a lot of this data to really help explain how the box office works. But this is, again, data from the past five years. And with an opening like this, that means that they would have expected historically a film like that to have somewhere between 103 and 125 million dollars. Right now, it's at 118. So it's definitely not towards the top end of it. So it's not blowing things off. It doesn't have amazing legs, but the legs right now are above average, above where it typically is. That being said, that opening weekend and the opening numbers are not nearly as strong as it could have and should have been for a film like this that needed so much more money to to actually be a box office hit. So right now I'm calling it to say that this film probably will end up losing some money at the box office, depending on what your break-even point is. Um, but still, those international numbers will be interesting to follow, as well as any long-term performance for this movie, because if we know anything about these Mission Impossible films, they tend to leg out. The question, though, is how much does it leg out? Let's just say a billion dollars is likely off the table at this point in time. And that's pretty much been taken over by Barbie as far as any possibility. There's a higher chance Barbie hits a billion dollars than Mission Impossible, which tells you a lot about the current state of our country and our world. Indiana Jones, though, did come in number five spot. Again, dropping 980 screens. This film is dead in the water. And because this film costs infinitely more than Mission Impossible, some people say, but wait, the, the estimated budgets are around the same amount of money, right? $290 million for Mission Impossible, $300 million for Disney's Dial of Destiny. But remember that they're already coming out with updated numbers for Dial of Destiny, saying the film probably costs closer to $350 to $400 million. And if we learned anything from the numbers for Doctor Strange, which cost $100 million more than the estimates, the chances of that happening for Dial of Destiny is also incredibly high, which is why even though the film on paper seems to be better domestically, right, with $159 million, remember Mission Impossible has two less weeks on the market versus Indiana Jones, so I would not be surprised to see Mission Impossible be able to catch up to and surpass the domestic for Indiana Jones, but also internationally, it's blowing Indiana Jones out of the water. And you'll see that when we go to the chart in just a few minutes. But Indiana Jones is still doing enough to it being a massive financial failure for Disney and probably the biggest box office bomb of the year. Insidious the Red Door dropped another 50% in its third week of release. So this film continuing to add to its profits. Elemental from Disney has actually had some very good legs, right? Percentage-wise has had a very good uh, run in that way, leg-wise. However, because its opening weekend was so incredibly small... It still has way too much, uh, too way too much area to catch up with, where it won't be able to catch up with, and so Elemental still set to be a box office flop, but not nearly as big. It's actually dropped underneath 100 million dollars in losses using a 2.5 multiplier, which means that Elemental will not be the biggest box office flop of the year. So hey. Kudos to them for having a film that's, I think, now available on Disney Plus or very close to being available. So this film is pretty much donezo, but hey, 
could have been a lot worse. Spider-Verse is also still making money, though not nearly as much as it once was. Clearly having a lot more films and a lot more variety in the marketplace means this film is slowing down. I said before how I had a chance of getting to $700 million, and I saw, you know, I think that I thought that $700 million to $750 worldwide was possible because of how much less money this movie is making with the competition. That seems to be a lot less likely now. It could still get to $700 million. I still do think that's a strong possibility, but not nearly as strong as it had been previously. We'll have to wait and see. Number nine spot goes to Transformers, continuing also to have, again, not the worst drop-offs in the world, but now it's being abandoned by its studio after seven weeks of release, which is why you saw the 67% drop. And so, therefore, this film also said to be a flop. No Hard Feelings also continue to be a flop, also being abandoned at this point. And Little Mermaid also being abandoned as well by Disney. Getting close to around, what, 450 million or so worldwide. I'll get to that number in a second. But this film still far cry from even the minimum break-even point that it had to reach in order to get to that point. Worldwide, Barbie, though, $337 million. Very impressive. No no other way to, to spin that. Again, the uh, actual box office production budget being reported and being talked about on the numbers puts it out $100 million. So they actually already have it past the break-even point. So whether it's 2.5 times the budget or three times the budget, if you take the $100 million production budget as fact, that would put it at that point. The only thing that would bring it underneath the break-even would be, as I said before, if the film costs closer to that $150 million. And again, that depends on how much money they actually got in tax breaks. No matter what way you spin it, though, it's going to either have made its money back already or will make its money back in a day or two, depending on what metrics what metrics you were actually using. Oppenheimer, $174 million. And again, this is the site that's actually reporting $180 million, which makes more sense to me. But that would actually put this on pace to be able to make up its budget as well, if that is the actual number. And again, the official number that's being estimated is $100 million, which would already put this film well on its way to doing that. Sound of Freedom at $124.7 million. Again, $5 million investment from Angel Studios. Huge, massive win for them. And this film is continuing to hit above its weight, possibly even beating out Mission Impossible this past weekend. We'll have to wait for the actual numbers to come in before we can actually say that officially, though. $370 million worldwide is where Mission Impossible Directing Part 1 is. So again, very very impressive numbers internationally, but not nearly enough there and also not nearly enough domestically for this film to have any chance of making any major money. As I said, you would have to use the minimum break even point, which I tend to use to 2.5 times the budget to have this film have a chance of breaking even. But based on the metrics and based on the history of the film and what we're seeing so far, it's not likely. It's possible, but not likely. Anna Jones has no chance in hell of being able to make its money back. Insidious, the Red Door, is continuing to make box office profits. Elemental, again, better than what had been expected. As you can see, look at the legs, right? The legs, percentage-wise, is very, very much off the charts for the numbers. However, it cost $200 plus million, and it just did not have much of an opening. So this film is pretty much dead to rights. Spider-Verse is at $675 million. So again, this movie also doing very, very well. Even if it doesn't get to $700 million, it's still a huge return on investment. Transformers at $418 million is Dunzo. No Hard Feelings, $82 million is also Dunzo. Little Mermaid at $548 million. Apologies from earlier. five hundred forty. So it'll get to five fifty, a little bit past five fifty, but will not get anywhere close to $600 million. And then Joyride, still no budget being reported yet, so who knows if this film is a failure or not, but based on what I'm seeing and based on what these films tend to cost, Probably is a box office flop. Let's go ahead and jump into the charting. And for those that have been waiting for the charting, I apologize that it's taken so long. But there were a lot of things that I think were important to actually, you know, uh, flesh out a little bit. But as I mentioned, we actually do have now the second weekend numbers for Mission Impossible. So what is going to happen to this movie? Based off of this, and this is using historical standards, right? At $370 million worldwide at this point in the second week of its, of its release, if it follows a typical track that most movies fall, not all, but most fall, it means that the minimum that would likely get this movie, or the minimum that this movie would get, would be around $529 million worldwide, with a max, meaning if it doubled its first two weeks, which is possible, but based on that 60 plus percent drop domestically, not likely, would bring it to $741 million worldwide. That means that the average that we can expect as the most likely result would be around $635 million worldwide. Because the film costs around $290 million, its break-even point using a 2.5 multiplier would be $725 million. If you use a three times multiplier, it would be much closer to $900 million. So using the break-even point, though, that I've been using now for years, $117 million is a financial loss that this film could see in a worst-case scenario, with a best-case scenario being around $10 million in profit. Even if it does get between $550 million, I should say, of losses versus $10 million in gains, both are not good. 
Both mean that they spent almost $300 million on it and only got $10 million back or still ended up losing $50 million. So again, box office wise, movie specific box office, it would not be very good. I think their argument is out there to say, well, we know that this film will eventually go to Paramount Plus, but it's going to be a long time, right? Tom Cruise especially has been a very huge proponent of the films being in theaters for as long as possible. So we know that the movie's not going to go straight to Paramount Plus anytime soon. We also know that Paramount Plus is only available in select countries, meaning that Paramount will have the ability to sell the streaming rights to this movie to many different countries that don't have that streaming service, meaning that they'll be able to make some money in the back end. That's not even counting things like Blu-ray and physical media sales. All that is to say that if the film gets close to its break-even point, it could still potentially be a wash or be a financial gain. No matter what way you spin it, though, it's not going to be as much of a game as a gain as they would have hoped and would have especially hoped with spending that much money on it. So all we can say is if you are a fan of this franchise and if you are a big fan of Tom Cruise's uh, films, especially when it comes to Mission Impossible, you can hope that next year's movie, Mission Impossible 8, or if it gets delayed a year, that they're able to uh, make up some of the money that they would have lost here. But at this point in time, there's not a lot of stuff to not a lot to indicate that, which is very odd to me just because I know the fact is that this movie is very well received. The vast majority of people that saw this movie have loved it, have recommended it, have seen it even multiple times. So it is interesting to see the film not doing as well. I think it's weird release schedule probably is what ended up killing it. Not necessarily the movie itself. It's runtime probably also hurt it quite a bit too, not to mention the Barbenheimer effect. But regardless of any of that, the film is definitely not anywhere close to being or having a chance of being a billion dollar film at this point in time. That instead goes to Barbie unless it has a catastrophic drop off. Um, Sound of Freedom is also continuing to do very, very well, right? 52 million in net profit. And that's using a $15 million budget probably didn't actually cost that amount because we know that they only spent $5 million to get the rights to it. The big question is how much did they spend on marketing? And that's something that we just don't know. That's one of the reasons why I'm using this current metric because it actually would not surprise me all that much to take the $5 million they spent on the rights. If they would have spent maybe $15 million on marketing, I don't know if that's reasonable for them to have spent that. But again, they would have had to spend something on it. They did have trailers. They did have promotions for it. I don't know exactly how much they would have spent though. And so therefore... Around 50 plus million in actual net profits is probably likely where it is at this point. Barbie, as you can see, if you use a $145 million budget, which again, reports are that it actually cost net cost them hundred million. It means that the film is either broken, even made profit, or is just about to. And even if it does have a catastrophic drop, it will still be able to definitely run with massive profits by the end of its overall run total cost. And with marketing means the break even point is around $362 million. And that's the reason why again, using a 2.5 times multiplier, that's where the film is. No matter what, though, the film is indeed going to make some profits. Oppenheimer as well, with $174 million. If that $100 million budget is accurate, it needs to make around $250 million worldwide to break even at 174 after just one weekend. The chances of that happening are very, very likely. If you want any other updates on any of the other films, you can check those out over on my chart over at OMB Reviews. And uh, yeah, you have massive return on investment for Spider-Man for, for Spider across the Spider-Verse. Barbie is likely to have even higher returns unless it drops off. And again, I'm just going to end on that point to say that I, I really, really hope that people wake up because the only way that this film, it's not going to lose any money. It's not going to be a flop that, that, that it's, it's way, it's made way too much money. It's opening weekend for that to even be a possibility. So the only thing that I can really hope for, and this comes more to a hope in humanity versus anything else, is that the word of mouth on this movie finally spreads. People start to wake up to the fact that the marketing is incredibly deceptive and is not actually telling you what the movie itself actually is and that we see a massive drop off. But right now, I will have to say I don't suspect that to happen. Who knows? If it does happen, I will be very, very happy. I will be very, 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 very pleased. But if it doesn't, I can't say I'll be surprised. And if it doesn't, billion dollars is on the table then for a movie like this. And Lord knows what kind of message that's going to send to the studios. It's not going to be, hey, let's make female-centric movies that are fun, that people can enjoy, but hey, let's make a bunch of radical third-wave feminist narratives and maybe disguise the movies just like we did with Barbie, and that's the way that we can ultimately be effective. Who's to say exactly what's going to happen, but these are the numbers as they currently stand. So what are y'all's thoughts about it? Do you think Barbie's going to make a billion dollars again? Depending on its drops next weekend, it is definitely possible. Also, what else thoughts on Oppenheimer and then Mission Impossible? Again, we now officially have data 
to suggest that it's not performing as well. And again, we could not really use the opening week's numbers because there was just no comparison of any other movies. But now that we have a week two drop off, that is always a good multi, uh, that is always a good metric to use. And so now we can say that the film is definitely not doing as well as it could or should be doing. And that instead, Barbie seems to be running away with it at this point in time. But what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section down below. Again, apologies for the longer video today, but it was important, I think, to break down all the different points that I was able to bring up. Check out my review of Barbie and Oppenheimer and Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. And hey, Sound of Freedom 2, if you want further thoughts and analysis on both of those films and why I think Barbie is utter gutter garbage. Anyway, you guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless. And now for a special shout out to all of my members at the Keeper of the Bifrost level and above, starting off first with my members over on Patreon, Father Luca Illick, Jaime Irie Hymason, Garrett Searles, Joe Horn, Jonathan Carney, Orange Chat Reviews, check out his YouTube channel by the same name, Laura, the Mono Major General's story, Rosetta Allen, check out her YouTube channel, Eagle Rider, and Miss Martin Muses, Check out her YouTube channel by the same name as well. To my subscribe star peeps, Zion Vodders, Matt317, check out his Twitch channel by the same name, Fast Reaction, The R, Mr. Roy, J Rod, The Beer Guru, and ZK Man, who you can check out over at xthebounderies.co. And lastly, to my locals members, Miss Minnesota Hockey Fan, How About a Hockey Player, J.H. Schwalbach, and Robert Barnes, The Amazing Lawyer. So thank you all very much for being my supporters at the Keep It the Bifrost level and above. And if you want your name shout out at the end of every live stream, and video, go ahead and check out that top link in the video description below to find out a ways to sign up to support the channel and to be able to get access to things like the shout outs, but also to giveaways to have an exclusive giveaways channel on my discord server where I give away 4k's blu-rays, all kinds of stuff, and also access to an exclusive podcast that I do once or twice a month, depending on what I'm able to get accomplished, especially over the course of this crazy, crazy busy summer. You guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless.